You're listening to Mammal Watching with Charles Foley and John Hall. You can find other episodes at mammalwatching.com slash podcast. I pick animals based on which ones inspire me. They're typically ones with interesting faces. When I get to photograph animals that are little known and that, you know, typically a lot of the primates are, are also endangered, that's like an extra dimension to me that I really appreciate. But this whole project, I photograph now 11 different species of primates around Africa and Asia. So you have to walk down to the hide while it's still dark. So you get up basically in the middle of the night, you walk down to this hide. The hide is dug into the ground because if it sticks up like a normal hide or a normal house, that would also make the psychos nervous. So you're sort of sitting in the ground just with half a meter okay. above the ground. Yeah. Wow. And that very first morning, the whole migration arrived. We counted them and we gave up after 3,000. You know, it's like an army coming into this water hole. Uh, and that was, I think, at the time, probably more than 50% of the whole Russian population of Saigas. Mm. And they are so noisy. So it's, you know, I'm sure you've both seen the, the migration of the wildebeest, how noisy they are. And it was exactly like that. They sounded like a mixture between wildebeest and sheep. And all of a sudden, I'm looking straight into the eyes of a huge male jaguar about 10 meters away from me. Wow. And you know, when you see big cats in Africa or India, tigers, leopards, lions, and you're sitting inside a vehicle, it's different from being sort of in the open in the same environment as a big cat like that and so it had been walking you know patrolling its territory walking along the river and it saw me sitting there squatting so it just stopped and it studied me and it wasn't threatening or roaring or crouching or anything it was just looking at me for a while in mountains with uh, the jaladas photographing them and they totally blew me away you know because they're so intelligent they have all these complex behaviors sometimes you feel like you're dumped right into the middle of a brazilian telenovela there's so much going on so much drama friendship love fights discussions all the time uh and then they have this incredible range of facial expressions and it was actually because of the jalanas and that experience there that i realized that when it comes to facial expressions the primates are just unique and there's this uh, interesting relationship that i only discovered after having photographed several primate species that it's the ones that live in the most complex social societies that are the ones that have the most expressive faces. If you'd like to listen to the full episode, then visit mammalwatching.com slash podcast.